Hey there YouTube, another year, another class of great NES games, and today I'll be taking a look at the year of 1987. Boy, this was a blockbuster year. A lot of great franchises started this year. But before we get to any of those games, how about we kind of take a look at what the hell was going on in the world that was 1987. Check it out. But in the world of video games, and in particular the NES, we received some, like I said, very groundbreaking franchises. Some that are still thriving and kicking ass to this very day. So without further ado, let's start with Castlevania. Fright fans and little kids all over North America screamed with delight when Konami unleashed Simon Belmont to us. Axes, whips, firebombs, and hearts were our companions in the race to kill off Dracula or die trying. Castlevania is widely recognized as a very tough NES game to beat as well. But with this entry, Konami begins its march as one of the lead developers of the 8-bit generation. The Goonies 2 is a rare occasion of a movie turned video game that actually doesn't suck. You guide the leader of the Goonies, Mikey, on one hell of a scavenger hunt against the Fratelli gang. The game was unique at the time, combining both platforming and cool first-person view modes. And plus it has Konami Man. I always love this. A famous quote about Kid Icarus goes like this. If you mash the platforming of Mario, the shooting of Metroid, and the item collecting of Zelda, you get Kid Icarus. One of the first games on the little toaster that utilized the password save feature. It was truly unlike anything on the NES. And it was incredibly difficult. Just ask the eggplant wizard. Started off pretty strong, eh? Well, right now we're gonna delve into some of the games that were flounders, that were absolute crap and garbage on the NES in 1987. Unfortunately, here you go. We start the list off with Deadly Towers, a game that has poor controls, graphics, and a labyrinth that would make David Bowie scratch his head. Stuffed crotch or not. Ikari Warriors, a game that sucks the fun out of running gun games. Simply because it's insane enemy placement and dead ass slow movement mire what should have been a stellar franchise. Avoid this game at all costs, because it sucks the big Akari. The Karate Kid, a game that on paper should have turned out great but instead falls flat by the tried and true Rainbow of Death LJN quality. And by quality I mean a shit stained piece of paper towel glued to your TV set is more entertaining to watch. Bad controls, poor level design, and frustrating beyond belief. Give this the Karate Chep of death and leave this title alone. Ring King, which is actually a fun little game but is saddled with... Um... Well, that. Pro Wrestling, Rad Racer, Wizards and Warriors are all fun games in their respected genres with either good controls, fun gameplay, and little story. And here's a fun little fact you may not have known, but Pro Wrestling was done by the same guy who helped form Human Entertainment, the makers of Clock Tower on the SNES and actually the Fire Pro Wrestling games, which I love. Cool! Ah, here we go. The Legend of Zelda is by far the best NES game that came out of that year. While the graphics are nothing to write home about, the game was shiny gold, had a battery pack to save your game, the first of its ilk by the way. A fully explorable world where you could tackle almost anything from the get-go, and sounds that are fondly remembered by all generations of game fans. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Mega Man stands as one of the best platformers released in 1987. The rich music, the nice graphics, and the fact that for the first time you could choose which stage to play kept gamers coming back for more. It would begin Capcom's tradition of a new Mega Man installment with each passing year. Metroid is the Mona Lisa to us video gamers. A bounty hunter that's revealed to be a woman at the end gave us a twist that M. Night Shyamalan couldn't see coming. The planet is big with tons of things to discover, learn, and blast. Uh, there's an eerie soundtrack that it's really atmospheric and it's accompanied this wonderful game that stands as one of the giants, the true giants on the NES. We wrap up this episode with Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, one of my personal favorites. You play as little Mac, a spunky little kid from New York trying to make a name for herself in the boxing world. I love that each new boxer you face is like a new puzzle to unlock, learn, and defeat. Persistence and patience will serve you well in the ring. You know, pattern memorization will be your new friend. Learn, young ones, learn a punch out. 
The soundtrack is also just wonderful, a treat for the ears with numerous tunes and sound effects that are just timeless in my opinion. What else can be said about the NES in 1987? It was the start of many excellent franchises who carved out hardcore fans including myself to the Nintendo brand in the first place. Sure we got stinkers, but all systems do. And I do hope you enjoyed this little peek into the NES in that year. And in the meantime, in between time, and remember, for those about to retro, we fucking salute you. Take care.